Welcome to this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every program we highlight a nonprofit in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County doing wonderful, wonderful work. And we're so happy this program to be highlighting the uh, Conflict Resolution Center of Santa Cruz County. And we're really happy to have a couple of the people who are there and doing such wonderful work. Uh, Elia Voce, who is the Restorative Justice Programs Director, and Danny Torres, who is the Neighborhood Courts Program Coordinator. So welcome, both of you. I'm really excited about uh, talking about the work that you do. It was uh, really uh, fascinating for me to go through your website and see all the things that are being offered and all the great work that you're doing in the community. And that's primarily what we like to do with these programs is highlight that. So Elia, why don't you start us off and tell us a little bit just about yourself and, and how you got involved in this work uh, well, thank you, Steve. Um, we really appreciate this opportunity to be here and be able to talk to the community through this format. So thanks so much for having us. Um, I mean, I was interested in conflict resolution way back in you know undergrad and then graduate school, and it was just always something I was drawn to. Um, I went to undergrad at Humboldt State, and there was a lot of um, sort of environmental um, conflicts up there. It was the time when Headwaters was really in the news. And um, and so it just, it, and I would r read things about how with these disparate groups of people who had very different um, ideas and viewpoints would come together and actually agree on things. And that was so inspiring to me. So I was doing an environmental science study, but I really focused a lot on conflict resolution. And I did the same in grad school. And then in about 2009, I took a mediation training with SEEDS in Berkeley, a really awesome organization. And then from there, I just got into volunteering with the Conflict Resolution Center here in Santa Cruz. Um, I grew up here in Santa Cruz, in Santa Cruz County. And uh, through my volunteering with the different programs, um, different mediation programs with the CRC, I ended up um, being able to become a staff member eventually. And that's where I've been for the past almost six years. Wow, wonderful. And Danny, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this work. Hi. Uh, thank you, Steve, for having us today. Um, I think this is such, a, such an important platform to to share a little bit about what we do at CRC. Uh, well, my profession, I'm an anthropologist, so I've always been working with communities, and I'm originally from Chile. And over oh. there, I was working with communities uh, from different kinds of communities and working mainly with vulnerability, so a lot with young people, uh, uh, people that has committed offenses, uh, disability, people affected by, by impacted by, like, you know, like big uh, companies. Uh, so I've always been connected with communities. I love to work uh, with people and to see, you know, I, I've always see the need of, um, you know, lifting up their voices, you know, and trying to get through to the underlying needs of whomever, whatever th those are. So when I moved here in 2017, um, I was trying to look something that could make you know something meaningful and to some because of that's what has always been my my goal you know working into something that is meaningful and that we can I, I can feel that my skills are are you know useful for the community. So I'm a mom and I my daughter yeah. was born here and I wanted to you know I, I'm very interested in into in improve the quality of the community here so I wanted to do something with my skills and that's how I got to CRC uh, in June 2020 and after that I well, I got very into restorative justice practices and I did a training too with mm. seeds last year and I just finished this weekend another training with the international uh, uh, what's the name? International yeah. Institute of Restorative Institute. Practices. Wow. Institute of, yeah, so I did a two weekend training about restorative justice and restorative conferences and it has been amazing to learn more and more about all this and, and to be involved with all the practices that we do at CRC. That are, I mean, there are so many good skills and good trainings that we offer and good, uh, good opportunities for the community to, to solve the conflicts and, and to improve. So very happy to be working there and with all the volunteers at my program, which is Neighborhood Courts and which is based in restorative practices too. Well, Santa Cruz is uh, very lucky to have you both. Uh, the work of uh, facilitating agreements amongst community members is really so important. Uh, well, I want you to start us off uh, and talk about a little bit about the substance of what uh, the CRC is doing. 
Yeah, um, well, I'd like to highlight our neighborhood courts program first. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll speak Please. a little about restorative justice um, and then I'll go into some of our other programs in, in a moment. But um, our neighborhood courts program is, is really fantastic. It's, it's groundbreaking. There's only you know three other ones that are happening in the state of California. We're the fourth. It's a partnership with the district attorney's office, which is fantastic because we have, you know, the the knowledge and experience and weight of the district attorney's office, and you have the experience of a restorative justice based community organization. And so you bring those two together, and we get to create this, um, co create this together, and in, in implementing and designing. So it's really um, groundbreaking, um, and and it's based on restorative justice, which at the end of the day, restorative justice can be implemented in so many different ways. It can show up in a lot of different ways. But the, one of the underlying goals is to create healthy, safer, more connected communities where relationships are really focused on. So when harm is done, we're looking at the relationships that were impacted, the community that was impacted, and how do we repair those relationships? How do we look at the impact and harm and repair that impact and harm? And less focused on what law was broken, but more focused on human relationships, human impacts, and how do we um, work to resolve and heal those human impacts? So it's really inspiring that we get to work with the district attorney's office and um, integrate you know, traditional criminal justice system with restorative justice, which has been around for centuries. And I just wanna make sure we really acknowledge the roots of restorative justice, which are are um, native people, um, especially Canadian First Nations is, is the form that we really are influenced by here in the United States and also the Maori of um, New Zealand. But it's also practiced you know, with many different uh, peoples across Africa and in, and in nation and people everywhere. So it's a very old system of justice where we bring everybody together who is involved in wrongdoing to really address it and make sure that everybody's needs are met, to make sure that accountability is taking place, responsibility. And it's just really, it's what Danny is really talking about, about really helping communities feel connected, giving vulnerable a voice. And it's just so much more healing, um, has potential to be a really healing process that can work alongside the criminal justice system, system which it is doing here with the neighborhood courts. So we're really excited to be a part of this. So I'll pass it to you, Danny, to share with us what the neighborhood courts program looks like. Great, and Danny, you can tell us uh, so much more about this being the program coordinator. And before you begin, uh, props to our good friend Elaine Johnson, who is uh, the program coordinator for the district attorney's office and works with uh, with all of us who are involved in the program. And she's terrific. So, Danny, tell us more, much, much more about this neighborhood courts program, which is just as Elias says, so groundbreaking, groundbreaking, and such a great uh, you know new thing for our community. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, as Alaya said, Neighborhood Court is a program to, uh, to support and stronger and safer communities. And what, the way that we do it, uh, first we train volunteers from the community. We train last year 24 volunteers. Uh, and we, we train them in different communication skills and also in restorative justice practices. So they know uh, and understand what is the program based on. And how we are holding now, we have conferences uh, we invite the person who caused the harm uh, to attend to a neighborhood courts conference. And in a neighborhood con courts conference, the participant meets with trained with the trained volunteers, the community members that are act as panelists, right. and they talk about what happened. Uh, and they, whenever when when this conversation starts, they explore and understand the harms and the impacts of uh, their actions, and they come up with a mutually agreed. Uh, plan for repairing the harm and um, preventing a future incident uh, from occurring. So that's basically what, what the conference is about. So we talk a lot about the impacts of their actions and trying to make them understand that um, um, that we are here, not as, you know, it's not a core, we're, we're supporting them, we want them to succeed, we want them to be out of the system and that, that's why this is a diversion program, we want them out and not trying to, you know, to reduce the recidiv recidivism is one of the goals too. Absolutely. So the, and the person harmed or impacted uh, is also invited. Uh, this is a the, this is a very important part of restorative pra practices is to invite the person harm to because they have a voice we, we're giving them here a voice to share and they can share their story and the impacts that incident has had has had on them so they are offered different ways that neighborhood courts can help to meet their needs and are supported in other choices including choosing to attend to these conferences or or i mean conferences or dialogues with the person who caused the harm or to make a specific request like an apology letter or 
whatever they want to happen uh, to address their their harm so it's we're bring completely bringing their voice up uh, in these conferences and we want them to to be part of this because they 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 always have something to say so we trained 24 volunteers last year and we're going to hopefully train more people this year we want to we're actively recruiting bilingual volunteers right and so far we have had a uh, 28 conferences and from those, uh, 19 people have com have already completed their agreements, and we have seven more that are in process to complete the. That their is agreement. wonderful progress. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really good, uh, very good success for for us to see that they're like really committed to to make things uh, better. Uh, you know, to do right the wrong and. And we're very pleased that we have a lot of feedback from our volunteers and and they're part of the community and they are very grateful that they have the opportunity to be here and we're trying to spread the world the world more about this kind of progress because it's a really valid uh, alternative for the criminal justice system and we want people to talk more and about restorative practices and mm -hmm. To have more people educated on this because it's a it can make a difference in a community. You know, we talk about healing, and this is a, a very transformative program that can actually really heal the community. So very happy to be part of this, and and yeah, that's that's how the program works. And every week we're having we're having conferences. We're planning to have, to keep adding more, uh, more more in the future and more we started with nine different offenses and we've been adding more offenses so we're working with misdemeanors and they have different for people to participate they have some different requirements and that's for for instance like to be a first time offender so they don't need to have a record it's like a it's a uh, one of the requirements for them to participate and they have to take accountability which is the one of the main goals of restorative practice practices and restorative justice to take accountability and to understand the harms and the impacts on the victim and the community, you know. So it's basically we have volunteers acting as, you know, indirect victims and representing the community, which is amazing because we're bringing them up and they have a voice and, and we're very glad to have you because you are one of the, our volunteers <laughs> yeah. as, as part of the, the program. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, I've been an advocate of restorative justice models for a long time, and uh, really it's a great credit to both you and Elia to have put together such a great cross-section of community members. People who are interested in this program really should go to the website, really should, and let's mention the website, which is uh, crcsantacruz.org. People should keep that in mind uh, that you are recruiting, particularly bilingual, for kind of the next group of panelists, but it's such a wonderful cross-section of the community that's really coming together that group to really work on restorative justice principles yeah yeah and if i just will add if, if you're interested in being a volunteer you check out the district attorney's website that's where the application is and um, a little more of information of what's required Beautiful. Um, and i just want to reiterate something that danny mentioned that um there's often like a kind of a common misunderstanding of restorative justice that it kind of lets people off easy and um, it's kind of soft and it's squishy and it's airy fairy. But from my experience um, working in this it, is it's actually much harder to take responsibility for your actions. It's mm -hmm. much harder to have to think about and be confronted with the impacts and harms and then to have to come up with a way to repair that harm and actively work to repair that harm. Whereas, you know, sometimes in the criminal justice system, you can walk in, be in front of a, a judge and deny responsibility, downplay responsibility, you know, well, it wasn't that big a deal. And then you get served your community service hours and you go out and do community service hours. You've learned nothing. You didn't take accountability. The person who's been harmed feels like you don't even understand what happened. So it's, this is actually not a soft program. It's really tough. It takes a lot. We're asking a lot of our participants who are the people who've caused harm to step up and take responsibility and do something to repair the harm. So this isn't easy. This isn't easy. This isn't letting people off the hook. We're asking a lot of folks um, and they're really rising to the occasion because we do it without shaming, without mm -hmm. punishment, but with a lot of support and a lot of accountability.
And I, I, I know from being on both sides of the bar, both in and out of court, that uh, sometimes appearing uh, in a courtroom kind of uh, strangers people from the community. It's an unfamiliar circumstance, unfamiliar atmosphere. But this program actually you know, invites people back into the community, actually wants them to be part of this. And uh, again, I'm very proud to be a, be a panelist and, and the conferences that I've done. It's been remarkable to me the depth in which uh, the panelists and the participants have really work together, you know, to restore both uh, uh, the participant and the, the, the harm is done to the community. So wonderful program, terrific, can't say enough about it. And again, uh, you're absolutely correct. You to go to the, the Santa Cruz District Attorney's website, you can find out more about that. And of course, Elaine Johnson, as we mentioned, is the program coordinator. So terrific program. We, we could spend the whole half hour talking about that and it would not be a wasted program. So I tell you, but we really want to get to more of uh, the, the, the programs that the CRC does fantastic work. So tell us more uh, about uh, about the trainings, for instance. Those, uh, as we mentioned, our show here is Evergreen. This show will be played throughout the year, but we can mention the types of programs that you're offering, and uh, I think people would find that just fascinating. Great. Um, so just to mention, um, normally our executive director, Leila Bratovich, who's um, a great leader here, she is on leave for a few months, so she would be normally um, sharing all this, so in her place, um, you, you get me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Happy to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've Happy had my hands you. on um, every one of our programs I've participated in and been trained for except small claims. So I'm pretty familiar with most of our programs. So our training program um, is fantastic. We do small trainings, we do big trainings. Uh, we do a conflict um, and communication skills training, which is like kind of a basic, it, we used to call it a, it's, it can take place in a half day or a full day format. Really the basics of like, what are some foundational blocks for building conflict resolution, for having effective communication. And you can use this at home in your family, you can use it in your workplace, you can use it out in the community, at school. So it's, it's a really great training that's accessible for everybody. And um, there's something to learn for all walks of life and all areas of your life. So that's our basics is the, the communication skills training. Um, we do a de-escalation training. Um, and, and all these trainings happen throughout the year here and there um, at different times. So you just have to check our website. Mm -hmm. We also do a more in-depth mediation skills training. So you can learn how to become a mediator. And that's sort of the basis for um, becoming a volunteer mediator with us is to have that training um, and so then you can come and volunteer with all our myriad different programs. We also do customized trainings. We do a lot of stuff for workplaces or groups or faith groups, um, different groups of people that just want some, the whole team to speak the same language and have some of the same skills for working together. So it's just sort of like basic foundational stuff that everybody should know in life on how to do basic conflict resolution. We also work with youth. Um, we do youth workshops for different organizations and, and that's a lot of fun. I love working with youth. Uh, so we're very customizable and tailorable. You know, one of the programs that you have offered uh, that I find very interesting is this de-escalation training. And I think it's so important uh, to have uh, that uh, that component uh, in training, particularly for community relations and community mediation. Would either of you could be able to tell us a little bit more about that? I actually haven't. That's one of our newer trainings. I haven't participated in that. That's the one <laughs> training I don't know much about. <laughs> Jenny, have you I know you have <laughs> No, I haven't done. I, I did it through another another group, but I didn't do it done. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, both of you, uh, not only being uh, participants in a lot of this and, and tr taking training yourself, are both trainers. And I know from the, going back to the neighborhood courts program, you and Danny were the, really the face of uh, all the training, the, really the extensive training that the panelists went through uh, in order to be able to qualify themselves to do this great work in the neighborhood courts restorative justice model. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, your your work as trainers rather than training. I think it's fascinating that you both have, you know, wear so many different hats within the CRC model. Yeah. Well, you know, when I was a kid in like high school, I thought I always wanted to be a teacher. I just didn't expect it to quite come out this way. Um, okay. I taught surfing for 15 years and that really, <laughs> I really got my chops there learning how to teach um, something as dynamic as surfing. Um, and so then when it came to um, being a trainer here at CRC, 
it was just sort of like a natural transition of like you kind of learn a program and you get experienced with it enough and then you can start to uh, bring other people into that and with the the neighborhood courts that was uh, one of the most enjoyable um, curriculums I've ever developed. I really had fun with that. I, I really liked making the, the training manual. Um, I took all the, the the experience and knowledge from Yolo County and the way they do it, San Francisco and the way mm -hmm. they do it. They're incredibly supportive. And then my own knowledge and put that all together and kind of created and designed what our Santa Cruz Neighborhood Court program was going to look like. Translated that into a training manual and then was able to teach alongside Danny, um, all you guys. And that was just, it was so much fun. It's one of one of the most enjoyable parts of my job is is um, teaching and training, and and I learn a lot while I'm doing that as well. And Danny, tell us a little bit about your experience. Uh, you were the other face of the, of the training, which was just a joy, frankly, you know, to participate in. But uh, tell us how you have your experience with that. Yeah, well, I've been. Um, I started getting familiar with restorative justice when I started working at CRC. So I got very familiar with everything, and I had like the best mentor ever because Alaya was always training me, like giving me a lot of. Uh, she educated me a lot through. Has been like helping me a lot through in this whole time. So um, when we were, uh, she was designing the training. I was like helping and learning the whole time. So has been a very learning experience through this whole year. And and yeah, I, uh, I'm very. I've been always working with communities, so I'm always doing some kind of like training, some somehow. So that's something that I really enjoy, and I really think that every time we work with with people, we get you know the feedback and the learning back too, because we're constantly learning too. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've been learning a lot, and and I'm very grateful that I have to I have a lion next to me and everybody from CRC because we have a very supportive team and Layla too that she's not here now but uh, mm -hmm. but she has been always supporting us and very she has a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, restorative justice too so has been very uh, and very grateful for the group that we are in and that we get to support each other constantly and and you know I'm very proud of how much I know now and very happy that I get to be very humble and open to keep learning constantly so and so trust yeah. the, the information to you yeah, absolutely uh, a couple of things uh, we want to make sure we mention uh, uh, donations to uh, the CRC you CRC um, SantaCruz.org, uh, as we were discussing a little bit earlier, uh, these great programs and services don't happen in a financial vacuum. We really need to, to have the community support to make those work. And uh, so really consider uh, making a donation to the CRC and the great work. And other uh, aspect of it really is, is volunteers. And so, you know, we're volunteers with the neighborhood court system, wonderful. But I know you have other tra mediation trainings and facilitating trainings and things like that. So people can actually take that work out in the community and, and, and act as facilitators and mediators as volunteers in the community. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, our volunteers are the backbone and lifeblood of the Conflict Resolution Center. We have volunteers who have been here for 30 years, some of them. Wow. Um, a lot of them have been around for over 10 years. Um, really skilled, dedicated, committed people. Um, and so they're really a solid part of, of this, of CRC's programs. And so they, they contribute to our community mediation programs, which are mm -hmm. our foundational programs. Um, and that's roommate disputes or neighbor disputes, family disputes, even like pet custody disputes, any kind of disputes go under our community mediation. That's accessible to everybody in the community who has a conflict, doesn't want to go to court and wants to find a way to deal with it that's going to be work for everybody, not create more animosity, ideally. So our, our volunteer mediators run, you know, are, are the ones who hold all those mediations. Um, we have affordable divorce mediation so that people can go through their divorce amicably outside of court. And we have, you know, supervising attorneys for that. And that that's an amazing program. We have specialized training for that for our volunteers. And they have, in addition to our mediation training, they get to do, um, portable divorce mediation training and facilitate that program. Small claims court. So if you um, are taking your case to court and you choose to mediate before you meet with the judge, that's a possibility for you. We do workplace mediation uh, so that for any kinds of supervisor and supervised or uh, coworkers or any kinds of conflicts that happen in the workplace, we have specialized mediators for that. Uh, we have parent teen mediation, which is one of the programs I oversee. It's one of our most um, 
uh, active programs. We get a lot of action with that one. And these are youth who are involved in the juvenile justice system. They get mm -hmm. referred to us through juvenile mm -hmm. probation. Mm -hmm. And those are really um, fantastic mediations to participate in. So our volunteers run those as well. Um, and we need a lot of bilingual volunteers for that. So if you're thinking about it, there's, there's scholarships available for that. Oh, um, and we, then we also have our victim offender dialogue programs with youth and the reconciliation program with adults, which are also kind of a victim offender dialogue program um, that are under our restorative justice heading. So we got a lot going on yeah, and we use I volunteers everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, people should be aware that there are opportunities uh, to really do this wonderful work. And uh, it's interesting that we, I think by nature are disputatious sometimes, but we don't have to be litigious. And I think there's a way really to bridge that gap. And one of the things that I was more most fascinated with looking at your website was the divorce mediation because having been my first year out of law school when I interned in a family law office and it was so acrimonious and so uh, so terrible to watch you know these families torn apart and stuff if there is a way to really mediate these things you know in a way that brings comfort and agreement to the parties that's just a, a fantastic service so I applaud the CRC for taking that on because that is a tremendous service to the community. Yeah, because at the end of the day, what we hope to do is just create more peace in the community. And a lot of, of lack of peace comes through conflicts, arguments, anger, misunderstandings. And if we can help bridge the gap, you know, one of many ways that we can help promote peace in the community, this is one of them. And we can do it in all these myriad ways. Yeah. Well, both of you seem to be uh, natural facilitators, I think. Yeah, that must, must be why you're so good at uh, doing the work that you do. We've got uh, another couple of minutes. Uh, tell us uh, what the future holds for CRC and kind of what you're hoping uh, to accomplish as we move forward. Well, we're, our programs are really growing. Um, we're working a lot um, with uh, probation and, and those contracts are really interesting. Um, it's been fantastic working with adult and juvenile probation mm -hmm. and um, how much they wanna do their, their work really well in the community and they bring on a lot of community organizations like ours. So, you know, the Reconciliation Project is an expansion of that, helping um, really promote healing amongst people who've caused harm and the people who've received harm in maybe more serious situations. So I think we're gonna start seeing restorative justice really grow in this community and different opportunities for that. Um, and our mediation programs are always growing as well because there's always a need, you know, conflict doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's just how can we learn to deal with it better? So um, there's definitely a lot of growth and a lot of exciting stuff happening, especially with defunding the police and the calls for that. There's a lot of room here for um, on the spot mediations and de-escalation trainings and things like that. So there's, there's just a lot of potential here. And Danny, you get the last minute here. Uh, you're growing this uh, neighborhood courts program, and I know you're going to continue to do that in the future. So uh, you're working hard on that. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to, we, we have already set some dates for the new training. We want more volunteers, more representation from the Latin community too. And we really want to, yeah, have more offenses too. So we can reduce a little bit of the waiting line in court for all these other cases and we can help uh, healing the community at the same time. So we're very excited to bring more people uh, on board and to have more offenses, more cases, more conferences and allow to the for the participant or the offender, I have a second chance, another opportunity to be back to the community and uh, without uh, any any record uh, after participating in this program, uh, which makes it like so important. And so we really we're really happy to grow and and allow them to have this opportunity. Wonderful. Well, uh, Alaya Vortier, uh, Danny Torres, uh, it's been wonderful having you here. Thanks, both of you. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.